Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today in this video I'm going to show you the difference between a cast aluminum wheel versus a forged aluminum wheel. So I have two different wheel setups that are the same specs with the exact same tires mounted on both of them and I'm going to be putting them on a scale to show you guys the huge difference that I noticed. So not only is price a factor when considering forged versus aluminum, but strength and weight are also things to consider. So I'm going to show you the first set of wheels that I have. So this first set is a set of VMR V701s. They're 18 by 8.5 plus 35, and they've got a 225 40 tire on it. They're all seasons, they're a 500 compound, and it's the same tire that I've got mounted on my Nismo LMGT4s. A cast aluminum wheel is made from a casting. So a casting is basically an open cavity where they're gonna pour molten aluminum into. And that molten aluminum is going to flow into the orifices that the casting is made from and all the aluminum is going to pour where it needs to go. Once that is done, it's going to be machined down, it's going to be sanded down and it's going to be refined so that it's going to look pretty much like this. All that needs to be done after that is it needs to be primed, painted and then clear coated. And then after that, it's done and on its way. A forged wheel, however, is not made in the same way. A forged wheel starts off as a huge chunk of aluminum. It's then put on a lathe where the excess aluminum is going to be cut down and the wheel is going to start to come and make its shape. After that's done, it's going to be put on a mill and that's where it's going to cut out the little parts in here for the, the grooves of the spokes, for the parts for the lug nuts, and that is how it's going to build that shape. That style wheel not only costs more because there's more involved, there's more machining that needs to be done, and there's a lot of steps that need to be done in order to achieve that forged wheel. So the trade-off of that is that it's going to be a more expensive setup than a cast wheel like this. Setting the price aside though, you're going to get many advantages by running a forged wheel versus a cast wheel. The forged wheel is going to be lighter, it's going to be stronger, and the grain structure of the aluminum is going to be different because it's made from a huge chunk and then milled away, instead of just poured into whatever cavity it is. That pretty much covers both ends of the spectrum. Now in between forged and cast, there is stuff in between that is semi-forged or flow formed or whatever people want to call it. But what's going to happen is they're going to basically cast it and then they're going to heat up the metal, shape it, push it down and they're going to basically flow form it where it's going to give some of the metal characteristics of a forged wheel and it's going to be cheap and kind of easy to make like a cast wheel. So if you guys are interested, check the description box, I'll have more information on that. But I'm going to throw both of these wheels on a scale and show you the difference between the two. So let's begin with the wheel that we are familiar with. This is a VMR V701 and I'm going to throw this on the scale to see what it comes in at. So this is the cast 18 by 8 and a half. By throwing this on the scale we have our wheel and tire and you can see that it comes in at 46 pounds. If we take that off the scale, we get our Nismo LMGT4, which is our forged wheel. It's the exact same 18 by eight and a half spec. You can see that this comes in a lot lighter. This is almost a 10 pound difference between both wheels and tires. When it comes to rotational mass, any weight that you can drop will really make a huge difference in how the car is going to handle. So if you can lower the weight of how heavy that wheel set is, if you can lower the weight of your brake setup, any unsprung mass for that matter is going to be a huge gain on the car. I'm going to throw these on the car right now and then take it for a spin. I'm going to be going to a 20% lighter wheel, which should make a big difference on performance. If you were to remove that same 10 pounds per corner from the sprung weight of the vehicle, so any weight of the car that is supported by the suspension, you will notice an increase in performance, but you're going to notice more of an improvement by the unsprung weight. So if you can reduce weight from your wheels, your tires, your brakes, you can really make a big impact on your car. That's why supercars nowadays are coming with pushrod suspension. The only sprung weight of the vehicle will be the wheels, the tires, the hub, and the spindle. But at that point, you're spending a ton of money on a super crazy car. But my advice to you right now is not to buy a new set of wheels and tires. If you guys can go in your classifieds right now and maybe pick up a used set of either forged or flow formed wheels, you guys are gonna be in great hands because you're gonna have very good strong wheels. You're gonna be able to get it for a good price considering it's kinda of cold right now and you guys are gonna be ahead. So come summertime or springtime, you're gonna have an awesome set of wheels and you've picked them up for dirt cheap. 
By just taking a look at the wheels, you wouldn't think that there's a 10 pound weight difference between these two. So if you consider all four of these wheels, the weight difference between the left set versus the right set of wheels is pretty much 40 pounds. Now that is insane when you consider that they're the exact same specs. A better comparison between these two to really show the difference between cast versus forged will be to dismount both tires and then compare that weight difference. But considering that the same size tire is mounted on both of these, it's crazy to think that the weight difference is about 10 pounds. I know I said I'd mount the LM GT4s with the tires on the car, but before I do that, I am going to be going a little OCD on something. With the tires outside, I want to pressure wash the sidewall along with all the goop that the tire shop used to mount the tires on the wheel. So they put a lube on the outside perimeter of the tire so it will slide onto the rim nice and easily. You can see here that it's kind of white and it doesn't really want to come off that easily. So by using a regular pressure washer with a standard tip on the end of it, you can not only remove all that grease, but you can notice that any browning that you have on your tire will be removed almost immediately. So that browning is the oil that's found in the tires that's coming out and making it way to the surface. The only reason why you're going to see that on the sidewall is because you're not going to have anything that's going to wear it off like you do with the contact patch. The area that's touching the ground is going to be wearing off that little surface layer of oil. On the sidewall we don't exactly have that so by using the pressure washer you can see we've got great results and it looks black again. You can do the exact same thing for the back side of the wheel to get the tire looking great and you can see that there's a big before and after difference. With the car jacked up in the air and supported by jack stands, we have our wheel removed. So we can go ahead and install our new LM GT4s on there by throwing it on and by installing the titanium lug nuts with our DeWalt impact driver. Now I'm only putting it on the very lowest setting so it doesn't over torque these lug nuts. Afterwards we're going to have to go ahead and use a torque wrench to tighten these up. I also have the center cap so I'm going to mount those on there now. With them installed, there is a huge difference on how they look. So these wheels are slightly more aggressive than the VMRs, but what's really nice about these wheels is the brake clearance. So you can have a huge brake caliper, a huge brake rotor, and it will fit in here. Because of that fact, it makes my small brakes look even smaller. They weren't really that noticeable with the other 18s, but these are really noticeable. I might consider doing a Nissan 300ZX four piston caliper front and potentially a two piston in the rear. Because right now these brakes, they are looking kind of small, especially behind this nice large wheel. And because of the open spoke design, it makes it even more pronounced. So like you come from the side, you can barely even see the brake. So with the car outside, you can see how much nicer the car looks with these black wheels. It really does change the look of it if you ask me. Now, what I think I might do, considering I'm going now with a darker color scheme, I think tinted windows would make the car look really nice because I've got a decently dark color with these black wheels. I feel like some dark tint would really complete the look. Looks really nice. Let me know what you guys think. Now I'm gonna take the car for a spin and see if it handles any different. Now, realistically, it should, but let's see in the actual real world if it does make any difference. So after taking the car for a little bit of a drive, it's nice to know that the wheels are stronger than whatever kind of cast wheel you're working with. So should I ever hit a curb, should something happen, the wheel is going to stay in its shape better. If I hit a pothole for whatever reason, the wheel is not going to want to warp, break, or bend because the wheel is forged. What I did notice while driving was that when you go and floor it and let off, floor it and let off, the car is more willing to twist the wheels faster and with more strength because there's less weight for it to spin. So what that means is that if you have a car that you want to lose traction with, this is an ideal setup because it's, it's got more punch to it. So because the wheel weighs less, it doesn't take as much work to actually turn the wheel so it feels torquier. So when I'm going around a turn or whatever, it wants to break traction. I didn't think that there would be an actual noticeable difference when driving the car, but turns out that couple pounds per corner really does add up. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one, peace.